Have you had time to ponder? I have. How many times have you ridden a scooter? Once. I've never ridden an electric one. So if you can guess the most expensive scooter, you can have it. I decided to have some fun, so I found a few people and asked them right off the bat which one they thought was the most expensive. The Awesome Leopard for $950, the Ice and Wheel GT2 for $750, and the Fluid Vista for $1,200. I feel like this one. The fluid on the yeah. right, okay. That That's was one. the same with me, I was thinking that one. I'm gonna go with the leopard. I'm gonna say this one. Looks alone, the fluid free ride. I then had them ride each scooter for about five to 10 minutes and then asked them that same question. So which do you think now is the most expensive? The fluid, why do you say that? I haven't looked, but I'm gonna guess it's a dual motor and these two are single motor. They're all single motor scooters. Are you sticking with your answer before as far as that one being the most expensive? Yes, yes, I would still. say, yeah. Okay, now tell me if you still believe that's the most expensive one. No, that one. Why did you change to this one? That was a smooth ride. When you took off, it didn't feel like you were gonna pop a wheelie, which to me that's comforting. <laughs> I was then curious to find out which they liked the best, so I asked them a few more questions. Which was the most comfortable? I liked the yellow one the best. I did too. For comfort, uh -huh. okay. Which one felt the nicest overall? I gave the nicest ride. The yellow one too, yep. okay. So which is the most comfortable out of the three? For just riding, Leopard. Which one felt the nicest? Oh, Leopard. Leopard did? Comfortable? Yeah. The yellow. Yellow one. Which one felt the nicest? The fluid. Fluid. Now this video is mostly gonna focus on the Awesome Leopard because I've already reviewed these two models. But since I had them and they're both single motor scooters, I figured I'd take them out here and do a competition. I wanna find out which is the fastest, the most poppy off the line, which has the best hill climbing ability and the longest range. So let's get started with power and speed. All three scooters have three speed modes, but let's find out which is the fastest on the highest of those three modes. 28 miles an hour for the Leopard. Icicle is popping out at 27. So that's 28 miles an hour for Fluid. Pretty much they're very similar as far as top speed. As far as acceleration, that's where you begin to see some separation. The Ice and Wheel was the slowest off the line, followed by the Leopard, with the Vista being the most poppy from a standstill. As far as brakes go, the Awesome has dual disc and electronic. The Ice and Wheel just has dual disc, and then with the Vista, you have disc in the rear and then a drum brake in the front. When you compare them side by side, and from going around 21 miles an hour, the Awesome had the most powerful braking. Hill climbing ability is gonna be where we're gonna see some separation again. Come on, come on. That's it. That's a no-go for awesome. Made it about halfway. A little further down for ice and wheel. Made it up about a third of the hill. Oh, money buys you torque. Fluid was the only one that made it to the top, which makes sense. It's $1,200. It's $250 more than the Awesome and double of the Ice and Wheel. Now moving on to range and battery size, the Leopard has the largest battery at 48 volts and 20.8 amp hours and has a range rating of 52 miles. When I took it on a range test, I averaged 23 miles per hour and I got around 15 miles. And when I got home, I still had half the battery bar left. It is winter riding here in Utah and I just I start freezing if I go longer than that. If I would have kept on going, I think I could have been well over 25. Moving on to the ice and wheel, it's got the same voltage of 48, but the size is pretty small at 15 amp hours. And they say this can take a rider up to 28 miles. I did do a single review of this if you want to check out my range stats in that review. And then moving on to the Vista, which has a 60 volt battery, but only 14.5 amp hours, which makes it the smallest of the three. These guys say that you can take this up to 45 miles. Again, if you want to check out the range stats on that one, I did do a single review of this one as well. Now I want to walk you through a few more things that the Leopard has. I always start with the grips. They're a little bit larger, but they feel nice. However, they do move. I can turn those. You got a light switch, kind of a janky, cheap feeling light switch. It's got a very bright headlight, which is down by the wheel, which I like. It just illuminates the ground a little bit better rather than if it was up by the handlebars. Uh, they got LEDs front and back. Got a cool tail light that's on the fin. When you hit the brake levers, that does flash. There's turn signals. It does show up on the LCD screen that the blinker is on. Below that is a horn. 
You do have a key, so when you turn the key on, hit the power button for a couple seconds, screen lights up. And in full sunlight, you can easily see the screen. If you hit that power button, that's how you change the speed modes. And then the front, you got some pretty standard brake levers for scooters in this price range, but they do have motor cutoff. Got them pressed, hit the throttle, nothing happens. The stem is adjustable. You do have to push in this piece in the front, and there's three different levels. So that does help it so it doesn't move on you. You can collapse it. There's a dial. And this is my favorite locking mechanism, just super easy. And then you pull this pin, and then it connects to the kick plate. It is kind of heavy for a single motor scooter at 70 pounds. I did think the deck was a little too narrow. And these two pieces up front, they're right where I want to put my foot. You can put them in between, uh, but I don't like to stand one foot in front of the other. I like to stand at an angle, and when I do, that hits that piece. There's a charge port in the front, just easy access, and the battery takes about five hours to fully charge. You got swing arm suspension front and rear, and I would have to agree with the people in the beginning of this review that said that this was the most comfortable because it is. It is very comfortable, super cushy. And that's pretty much it. That's everything I can tell you about the awesome Leopard. If you have any questions or if anything was unclear, hit me up in the comments. I'll also have the link over to Geek Buying if you do want to pick this up. And I'll see if I can snag a discount code or something for you guys. And I will update that throughout the year, so be sure to check back if you do want to pick this up. As always, thanks for watching and take care.